It finally happened, which means it's finally done and we can finally stop talking about it. After this video, of course. Jack Eichel has been traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Have you noticed that whenever a big money player becomes available, we make a joke that the Vegas Golden Knights are going to be in on that player and it's hilarious because they don't have any room. How on earth are they going to fit that player? And then they get him anyway? Yeah, we were joking about that a few months ago, but we didn't realize that the weirdest part of this trade would be that the Buffalo Buffalo Sabres would be near the top of the standings when the trade happened and Vegas near the bottom. But enough of all that, what was the trade itself? Officially official from the Vegas Golden Knights Twitter account, the Golden Knights have acquired Jack Eichel and a conditional pick from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, and two conditional picks. That's the whole trade, but obviously not the whole story. Sportsnet.ca with the full breakdown on this one. If the Vegas Golden Knights first round pick in 2022 is not in the top 10, the Sabres get that selection and a Vegas second round pick in 2023, while the Knights get a Buffalo third round pick in 2023. If the Golden Knights first round pick in 2022 is in the top 10, the Sabres get a Vegas first round pick in 2023 and a second round pick in 2024, while the Knights get Buffalo's third round pick in 2024. That's just Vegas doing their due diligence because they are having kind of a rough season. They're a well-built team, but at the end of the day, if all your players are injured, uh, yeah, you're going to struggle a bit, which they are. But it's okay, they just got Jack Eichel. Oh wait, no, he's going to be out three to five months, according to Vegas GM Kelly McCrimmon. And that kind of gets lost in all this. What does this mean for the Sabres? What does this mean for the Vegas Golden Knights? What it means for Jack Eichel is he finally gets to get his neck fixed. He gets the disc replacement surgery that he wants. And that was something gross in this process that I hated the whole time, is that Jack Eichel's in pain and the Buffalo Sabres aren't letting him get the surgery that he wants. Now he finally gets it and he gets to go on his road to recovery. Will he play later this season? It looks like it. Will he play at the Olympics? It's not really looking like it. From a trade standpoint, for Buffalo it was very important that they didn't retain salary on Jack Eichel's deal. Now I've seen a lot of criticism there. Imagine if they had retained salary on Eichel's deal, they could have got so much more. Well, yeah, they could have gotten more assets from the Vegas Golden Knights or from some other team, but those assets don't just fall out of the sky. The cost of those assets is salary retention. Now, could the Buffalo Sabres afford to retain salary on Jack Eichel? I mean, yeah, now they're bad now, or at least they look bad on paper, not in the standings. But the ultimate goal of the Buffalo Sabres, and you got to appreciate it, is they want to be good and retaining salary on Jack Eichel uh, could potentially get in the way of that. Also, what are we talking here? One million, two million, five would be the maximum. Including this season, Jack Eichel has five seasons left on his contract at $10 million per. If I'm retaining $5 million for five years, that is $25 million. You bet you're paying through the nose for that. And you can see why a team would want that and why a team would be willing to pay a premium for that, but the Buffalo Sabres were not willing to do that. An amazing stat from all of this, the Vegas Golden Knights have only been around for five NHL drafts. They have traded away four players they have drafted in the first round. All three of the guys that they drafted in the first round in 2017, their first draft are gone. Cody Glass, Nick Suzuki, and Eric Brandstrom, gone. 2018, they didn't have one. 2019 was Peyton Krebs, and now he's gone. For those of you wondering who the Vegas Golden Knights drafted in the first round in 2020, Brendan Brisson, you're next. Everything about the Vegas Golden Knights, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. We thought they were going to hoard draft picks and build for the future, and then in their first year, they were really good, and they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, and they traded a first, second, and third for Thomas Tatar en route to that, and they're just trading away draft picks like candy they don't care and that's just the draft picks that they have already made they just hurled a couple more out the door at the buffalo sabers and then of course there's alex tuck now alex tuck good hockey player number one but also from syracuse new york so i have to wonder if the buffalo sabers kevin adams they're thinking all right this guy who is a good hockey player is going to be a good hockey player for us for a long time because keep in mind Alex Tuck is at the beginning of year three of a seven year deal that he signed with Vegas 4.75 million dollars per and, and can I just ask a question what is the point of signing with Vegas can I offer some unsolicited advice from a random YouTube man on the internet 
If you're an NHL player and the Vegas Golden Knights get you, rent. Or you could buy a property, but you're, you are going to have to sell it. It's hilarious that Vegas, one of the most famous tourist destinations, is exactly that experience for a lot of NHL players. I'm here, I'm happy to be on the Vegas Golden Knights, I'm gone, I'm traded, how did this happen? But that's Vegas, getting distracted. Buffalo, if Alex Tuck doesn't want to stay there or the Sabres decide keeping him is not the best thing for their future, he could be even more draft picks for their future. Or Alex Tuck is also a guy from Syracuse, New York, six foot four, 220 pounds, who has consistently shown that he has 20 goal score potential. Um, yeah, maybe keep him, especially for a contract that is less than $5 million per season, less than I'm sure some teams ask the Sabres to retain on Eichel. Personally, if I'm Kevin Adams, that's a guy I'm probably trying to keep. Now, could the Sabres have done better if they traded with another team? Eh, some people are saying that. Kevin Weeks got Twitter going nuts. For all asking, my understanding is the Flames have Matthew Kachuk, who is a future potential captain, an upcoming first round pick, a former first round pick, and two prospects in the Eichel sweepstakes with the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, yeah, that would be quite the splash, would it not? Yo, imagine the Battle of Alberta with Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel in it. But according to our own Eric Francis, I can confirm there was never any chance that Matthew Kachuk would have been involved in any deal for Jack Eichel. So a lot of people are saying a lot of things and those things are different, but Jack Eichel is now on the Vegas Golden Knights. A big question with Eichel has been whether he gets the fusion surgery or the disc replacement, is he ever going to be the same again? Can I offer an opinion? Even if Eichel took a slight step backward in the quality of player that he is, he would still be far and away Vegas' best option up the middle. Vegas has had good centers over the years. Uh, people talk about their centers like they're garbage. They're not, but they do lack the top tier elite talent that you seem to need, especially at first line center. Remember last year, Vegas was playing without their number one center against the Montreal Canadiens in the conference final. And then that center came back from injury and it's Chandler Stevenson. Chandler Stevenson, who is good. He's good. I'm not trying to hate. Heck, he's got four goals and five assists for nine points in nine games to start this season. Red hot. But he's also 27 with a career high of 14 goals and 35 points. Okay, those 35 points were in a shortened schedule season, but even if you put it on an 82 game pace, it would be 56. How about this? Let me throw this out there. Chandler Stevenson, second line center. Or, or third line center because William Carlson is a person who exists. And all of a sudden by adding just one guy, you push other guys down the lineup and Vegas, when healthy, looks formidable. By the way, it's really important to emphasize when healthy. I just looked at the Sabres long-term injury reserve on Cap Friendly. Jack Eichel, Mark Stone, Max Pacioretty, and Jake Bischoff. That is one player away from being a pretty good PP1 on most teams. And if you add Nolan Patrick and Zach Whitecloud, who are just on regular injury reserve, it's an extra attacker group. There's a couple really good stories that can come out of this. One, if Jack Eichel has some success with the Vegas Golden Knights, not only is he the type of personality who I think would fit right in in Vegas, super entertaining, super boisterous, a lot of bravado, but for him to come back from everything that he's been through would be a fantastic story. On the other side of it, the Buffalo Sabres are finally able to move on. Less so the team, because, I mean, it was their decision to not let Jack Eichel get his surgery, but more so the fans. It's sad that Jack Eichel, who was once this beacon of hope for the fans, is now gone. But he was gonna be gone for a long time. This has been months and months and months in the making. The fans don't have to think about it anymore. It's done. It's, yes, you can be sad, but it's done. You can move on, the team can move on, and they can start building, which is something that the Sabres have been trying to do for a long time after a rebuild to get Jack Eichel. That was another thing I thought was hilarious. Kevin Adams said that the Sabres want players who are dying to be Buffalo Sabres, which is pretty rich coming from a team that was dying to get Connor McDavid and ended up with Jack Eichel, who knew forever that he was their silver medal. And they can say whatever they want. Oh, the Sabres always had an 80% chance of getting Jack Eichel. You wanted McDavid. And it's fine to have wanted McDavid, but you can understand why that might hurt some feelings. And let me just throw this out there. The Flames, even though they may or may not have made that 
package offer wanted Jack Eichel. The Carolina Hurricanes, according to Elliot Friedman, were in on this. I'm, I'm not sure why, on account of their the first place team in the NHL right now. Do those teams do a complete 180 and say, we no longer want a part of a giant trade, we're just going to do nothing? Or is something else coming down the line? That's what I thought about the Jack Eichel trade to the Vegas Golden Knights. What do you think? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Do you think the Vegas Golden Knights won it? Do you think the Buffalo Sabres did pretty well? Let us know. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends Jack Eichel is a Vegas Golden Knight. And we never have to talk about this trade again. Until it's the longest trade tree we've ever done. In, I, I don't know, what do, you, what do you think, Drew? 15 years?